Hi everybody, so today I'm going to do a few problems about hyperbolas and then a few word problems with hyperbolas. So I thought we would start with one of these analyzing the hyperbola questions where you're first going to have to put it into the correct format. So I'm starting with y squared minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8y plus 4 is 0. And I'm thinking, well, let's put the y's together. So I have y squared plus 8y. And then I have minus 3x squared minus 6x. And let's just put that 4 on the other side so it becomes a negative 4. So with the y's, um, it looks pretty good. So I'm just going to throw parentheses around it. I'm giving myself a little bit of space and say y squared plus 8y. But then the x squared, it has a negative 3. And we're going to complete the square for both the x squared and the y squared. So with the negative 3, I need to just take that out. But when you do that, make sure you're paying attention to how it's going to flip the sign with the negative 6x. So that's going to become positive 2x. So make sure you're thinking negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2. Leave a little space, write your negative 4. All right, so this was kind of just organizing. Then to complete the square, I'm going to take the number in front of the y, which is 8. I'm going to divide it by 2, and I'm going to square it. Same thing with the x. I take the number in front of the x, which is 2, I divide it by 2, and then I square it. So we completed the square, but we have to balance. So I did something new to the left, which is I added 8 over 2 squared, so I do it on the right. Then with the 2 over 2, don't forget that negative 3 in front, so I want to write minus 3 times 2 over 2 squared. So don't forget the coefficients when you're balancing it out. The y plus the y squared plus 8y plus 8 over 2 squared becomes y plus 4 squared minus, there's a 3. x squared plus 2x plus 2 over 2 becomes x plus 1 squared equals. I had a negative 4. 8 over 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16 minus 3. 2 over 2 is 1, so the, you can put a 1 there if you want. All right. So I have negative 4 plus 16 minus 3. When you put that together, that just gives me 9. So I have this y plus 4 squared minus 3 times x plus 1 squared equals 9. So let's just divide everything by 9. So here, now I have y plus 4 squared over 9 minus, cancel the 3 with the 9, make that a 3, so I have x plus 1 squared over 3, and that is equal to 1. So this is really my starting place. This starting place, let's just go ahead and put this on a new page um, so that we have plenty of room to write what we want to do. So to start off, we should say the center is going to be negative 1, negative 4. A is going to be 3. That comes from this 9. I take the square root of 9. That's A. B is going to be the square root of 3. So the square root of 3 is B. And then C, I add together the 9 plus 3, and I take the square root. So 9 plus 3 is 12. Square root of 12, well, remember I can make this square root of 4 times 3. So this is 2 square root of 3. So this is C. Then I have to think about, all right, what is happening? So let's kind of start sketching while we talk out what all the points are going to be. Let's start with our negative 1, negative 4. So there's our center. y is first. So because y is first, we are going to go up and down by a, which is 3. So my vertices, I'm going to go up 3. So I have negative 1, negative 4, plus 3. This is negative 1, negative 1. And then I have negative 1, negative 4, minus 3. So this is negative 1, negative 7. So I'm down here. Then the foci. Um, same kind of ideas there. I have the negative 1, negative 4. I want to add 2 square root of 3. And then I have negative 1 with negative 4 minus 2 square root of 3. So I'm going from the center up and down A, and then from the center up and down by C. 
It may help if you put that in your calculator just to have an idea of what that looks like. So the square root of 12 is about 3.46. So if you're kind of comparing to A was 3, C is just a little bit bigger, like not even half bigger. So it's going to be pretty close when you put those two points on. So let me kind of label them a little so you can see them. So center, vertices, and then the two Fs. So um, to be able to draw, I still go back and I grab this square root of 3, which is about 1.7. And I'm going to go that on the right and on the left. So from negative 1, and I'm going to go to the right, 1.7, so 1 and a little bit. And then 1.7, so let's say 1 and a little bit. I'm going to make that box from there. And then you're going to put in the asymptotes. Go through the center. Then I want to draw. So I draw from the vertex. I go up. And I also go down. So now the last things I need to put on there would be the asymptotes. So I have y plus 4 is equal to plus or minus. I look at how much did I go up. Well, the up came from under the y, which we said was 3. So we went up and down 3. And then how much did I go over? That's under x, which is the square root of 3. And that's x plus 1. We do have this problem with 3 over the square root of 3. Um, hopefully you know by now we've done this so much this semester, but I'll do it the long way. If I multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, this gives me 3 square root of 3 over 3. The 3 is cancel. I get square root of 3. So I want to write this as y plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 3 times x plus 1. These are my two asymptote equations. So this next problem I want to do for you, I have some information and I want to make the equation of the hyperbola. So I have vertices at 1, negative 3, and 1, 1. And I have an asymptote that's y plus 1 equals 3 halves x minus 1. You would want to start with the center. Now you have two ways to get the center, so I'm going to show you both. One way would be to find the midpoint. So you would say 1 plus 1 over 2 with negative 3 plus 1 over 2. So I'm taking the midpoint of the vertices. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. What does this say? It says I have the x is minus 1, the y is plus 1. So I have... Um, like somehow I'm thinking x minus 1 and I'm thinking y plus 1. That's y. But do you see how that was kind of already in the equation too? So I could have grabbed the center here to see negative 1, positive 1, or I can do it from the midpoint. So two ways to get that. So we have the center. This is my center, 1, negative 1. So there's my first piece of information. Then I kind of want to look at the graph a little to say 1, negative 3, and then 1, 1. That's up and down, and the center is here in the middle of that. So I know y is coming first. So this looks like y plus 1 squared over a squared, which we'll get, minus x minus 1 squared. i got to figure out what b is. That'll be 1. Since I know this point as 1, negative 1, and I know these points, let's call this one 1, positive 1, the distance is 2. Same thing if I say 1, negative 3. The distance is 2. So 2 is a. So here I'm going to put 2 squared under the y plus 1. I don't know b, so I need to figure that out. But what I grab is this 3 halves from the slope that I have on my asymptotes. So the slope is 3 over 2, looks like rise over run. Okay, when I look at that, this 2 looks like rise. So when I look at this 3 halves, it looks like 2 over, I don't know this number, let's call it b. Right, because this is a squared, this is b squared, so we'll write it that way. 
So I'm going to cross multiply. I have 3b is 4, so b is 4 over 3. So don't just assume that the 3 over 2 is a over b. We don't know that. We have to kind of do some stuff. So now I have y plus 1 squared over 4 minus x minus 1 squared over, this is 4 over 3 squared, equals 1. Now, we can do this a couple of ways. So one way would be y plus 1 squared over 4 minus x minus 1 squared. This is 16 over 9. Let me keep that in parentheses, though. I'm dividing by a fraction, which makes me want to flip it. So that makes me want to say, here's my final answer, y plus 1 squared over 4. When I flip it, the 9 comes up top, the 16 goes on the bottom, I have x minus 1 squared, this is equal to 1. So this is like the final, like how I can make it look nice. All right, well, let's talk about some word problems. So this says some nuclear power plants utilize natural draft cooling towers in the shape of a hyperboloid, which is a solid obtained by rotating a hyperbola about its conjugate axis. Suppose that such a cooling tower has a base diameter of 400 feet and the diameter at its narrowest point, 360 feet above the ground, is 200 feet. If the diameter at the top of the tower is 300 feet, how tall is the tower? All right, so I'm going to do my best attempt at drawing this. So, hyperbola, what kind do you like this? So what did we find out? We found out that the base, the base diameter is 400 feet. So the diameter is from one side to the other. This is 400. And then it says at its narrowest point, so we're going to call this the narrowest point, which is 360 feet above ground, so this is 360, it says the diameter there, the diameter at its narrowest point is 200 feet, so this is 200 feet. And what we're looking for is how tall is it all together, is it at the top if it's 300 feet. Okay, so this is our whole like premise is in this picture. So what I see first is this opening this way, which tells me I should do x squared first. And then we'll do minus y squared. Now what I see is if I had to look at this narrowest point, well that narrowest point becomes the center. So the center, um, we could draw this on a coordinate axis and call this the center. But notice this is 360, and I split the 200 in half. It'll be 100 on the right, 100 on the left. So this is 100, this is 100. So this 360, which is 0, 360, this becomes the center. So it's x squared minus y minus 360 squared. We have to figure out a and b is equal to 1. Well, a is the easy part because I have this 100 here. So that says, um, if I go to the right, if I go to the left, that's going to be the vertices. So the 100, that's the A. So A equals 100. Um, I don't know B, so I'm just going to kind of leave it and say, oh, I need to figure out what B squared is. All right, so how am I going to figure that out? Well, I know some other information, like I know this part at the bottom. So this part at the bottom says if I go 200 to the right and I go 200 to the left, I have these points 200, 0, and I have negative 200, 0. So what that tells me is I know an x and a y. So I know when x is 200, so let's put in 200 squared over 100 squared, that the y is going to be 0. So I have 0 minus 360 squared over b squared equals 1. All right, so we need to simplify that. Okay.
this 200 squared over the 100 squared just turns out to be like you could cancel the zeros. I get 2 over 1 squared, which is 4. So 4 minus, um, I have 360 squared. which is 129600 zero, zero, over b squared equals 1. So here this negative, it's squared, so we don't have negative, negative. This is still subtracting. I want to move this 4 over to the right side, which means I'm subtracting. So I have negative 129600 zero, zero, over b squared is 1 minus 4 and negative 3. Both sides are negative, so I'm going to make them positive. I'm going to bring this b squared up. So I have 1, 2, 9, 6, 0, 0 equals 3b squared. Let's divide by 3. Cancel, cancel. So now I'm going to take the square root. Um, I'm going to call this b is equal to 207.846. Now, I rounded it. If I was doing this for real, I um, wouldn't change it at all. Like, I would leave it as the square root of 129,600 over 3. That'll make it more accurate, and maybe that's what I'll show you on the next page. But if we just wanted to have some estimation, there's an estimation. But I do think in the real world, I don't want to estimate anything until the very last step because I don't want to mess things up. All right, so what do I have right now? I have x squared over 100 squared minus y minus 360 squared over, and I said, well, let me just put it back in the way I had it. This will be 1, 2, 9, 6, 0, 0 over 3. So remember, it was the square root. I square it because it's back in the equation. This is equal to 1. Now, the last part of my picture says um, we would like to know how tall it is if this is 300 feet across. So remember that in our picture at the top, we said 300 feet. So again, we think divide by 2, 150 on the right, 150 on the left. So I know x is 150. So x is 150, and I want to solve for y. So I have 150 squared over 100 squared minus, I don't know why, so I'm going to leave it off, over Remember, I have this 1, 2, 9, 6, 0, 0 over 3. It's already been squared. I don't have to square it. Equals 1. Okay. If I do 150 squared divided by 100 squared, I get 2.25. Minus, I have this whole mess. So I'm going to bring this 2.25 over to the other side. So now I have negative y minus 360 squared over this 1, 2, 9, 6, 0, 0 over 3 equals negative 1.25. Again, negative left, negative right. Let's make those positive. Let's get rid of this fraction. So I'm just going to multiply both sides by that same fraction. So I have y minus 360 squared equals 1.25 times 1, 2, 9, 6, 0, 0 over 3. I did not flip it because I wasn't trying to just bring it up. I'm trying to get rid of it. So I multiplied both sides by the same thing, which was this 1, 2, 9, 6, 0, 0 over 3. 1, 2, 9, 6, 0, 0 over 3. That cancels. That cancels. I have this number. All right. This is squared. I want to take the square root. I want to take the square root. I know this is a messy number. I'm okay with it. I want to keep it as exact as possible, so I'm waiting till the last step to use my calculator. Okay, so the last step is now add 360. So I have the square root 
of 1.25 times 129600 over 3, and then plus outside of the um, square root plus 360. Now I'm going to round it. I'm going to say this is 592.4 feet. So at the last step, that way I only rounded that one time, this would be the height of this power plant. All right, one more word problem. The light from a lamp creates a shadow on a wall with a hyperbolic border. Find the equation of the border if the distance between the vertices is 18 inches and the foci are 4 inches from the vertices, assume the center of the parabola is at the origin. Right, so center of the parabola is at the origin. The vertices are 18 inches apart, which means I'm going to go 9 up and I'm going to go 9 down. So up and down. Now the up and down you can see from the picture. So that kind of helps you to tell how this is oriented. So Y is coming first. Then it says um, the foci are four inches from the vertex. So another four inches. So go four up and then go four down. Okay, so what does that tell me? It says A is equal to nine. C is equal to 13. Okay, so I have a nine and I have a 13. I have A squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 9 squared plus b squared equals 13 squared. So let's do this. Let's say b squared equals 13 squared is 169. 9 squared is 81. 169 minus 81 is 88. So I have y squared over my a is 9 squared is 81 minus x squared over b is 88 square or b is the square root of 88 so b squared is 88 and that's equal to 1 so this one much shorter much easier problem